Now, Secretary Sebelius uh, is trying to fool people because she knows Obamacare is unpopular. And so she goes around saying, oh, no, we want states to, to have some local autonomy. No, no, they want states to bear the risk of imposing the Obamacare regulations. Uh, they want states to bear the cost because she doesn't have a budget to set up exchanges. She has a little bit of a budget to give a few million dollars to states to start off their exchanges, but that runs out by 2015, and then the state bears the cost of operating the exchange. And after the exchanges launch in 2014, 2015, she has the power to change regulations, whatever she wants. And you can write whatever the heck you want in your state law. Doesn't matter. If you've established an exchange, if Obamacare is found constitutional by the Supreme Court and it's not repealed uh, by the next president in January 2013, her regulatory pen is supreme over your state law. And there's no way to get around that. And if you look at the Medicaid program in Idaho or any other state, how much flexibility do you have? You know, back in the late 1960s, when Medicaid was rolling out, it was kind of, that was the way they sold it. Oh, the federal government's just going to throw a lot of money at the states, and you'll be free to design whatever safety net you want. Well, I mean, everybody knows that's not the case. The, the federal bureaucracy imposing on state Medicaid programs is huge. And in uh, Obamacare exchanges, it's going to be even worse because the subsidies that the health insurers get to participate in the exchanges, the tax credits that will go to uh, finance the health insurance for the individuals, that all comes from the federal government. Uh, there's no way that your local uh, authorities, your local board of trustees, or however you set up the exchange, is going to have any influence over the rules because of two reasons. One, Obamacare will be supreme. And second, all the money is going to come from Washington, D.C. So power follows money. 